when you're pushing on detox and saying, go, 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 you really need to make sure that your liver has the foundation. You can't build a house without a really good foundation. Hi, I'm Dr. Lauren Tessier, and today we are going to be chatting about how to support your liver during mold illness. So let's get into it. So you might find yourself in a situation where you've just been told that you're mold exposed or you have a mold illness issue, or you're in the middle of mold illness detoxification. It might be a little too rough and too rocky. And so I'm here to chat about how you can specifically support your liver during this process. And to be clear, this is not medical advice and you need to be working with a doctor who can specifically adapt any of these things for you. So this is strictly education. So let's hop into it. I want you guys to understand the liver really, it's doing a lot of work around the clock. And if there's any organ that needs a lot of love in your body, I think it's the liver. Liver love is a, a big thing. When you're pushing on detox and saying, go, 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 you really need to make sure that your liver has the foundations. You can't build a house without a really good foundation. That's what we're going to be chatting about. So the first thing that you need to do when you are supporting your liver and really giving it some love is provide it nutrients. And these nutrients are, I would say food for the liver, but they also are something called cofactors. They help the liver to do its job. They are the gasoline to make the car go. And so without it, like your liver is just kind of stuck uphill and getting clogged with toxins and can't move forward in what it needs to do. We'll start with like vitamins, right? The B vitamins, are a huge group for detoxification, especially your B6, your B1, and your B7. Your B7 is also known as biotin, as you guys know, for like hair, skin, nails. Your next group is what we call your ACEs, your vitamin A, C, E, zinc, and selenium. And these also really help that process. Another core one to support detoxification is magnesium. And there's all different types of magnesium. Honestly, I would stay away from the oxides and go more of like the citrates or the malates or, you know, any doctor who is litter and mold is really going to be able to help tailor these nutrients to you and also check for a nutrient deficiency ahead of time. What I do want to say here is to be careful with fat soluble vitamins uh, can build up in the liver. And so you can deplete them as you're going through the detoxification process because binders can bind them up and pull them out of your body. So you need to replete them, but fat soluble vitamins, you have to be very careful about specifically the E and the A, but more so the A. And so you need to, again, speak to your doctor about what your particular doses should be. Now I'm lumping into this group of nutrients, phosphatidylcholine. Phosphatidylcholine is a phospholipid that really enhances the ability of a cell to remove toxins from inside it. And it also like makes up the membrane of the cell, but it's also needed for the production of bile and the movement of toxins out of the liver and into the bile. And so without it, like the liver again, just can't do its job. And the other cool part about this is it also has a bit of antioxidant support and protection for the liver as well, which is really rad. There's a lot of reasons why I suggest and use uh, phosphatidylcholine, um, but of course you need to work with your provider because you need to really make sure that you use a high quality form of phosphatidylcholine because low qualities can cause an increase in something called TMAO. Without getting too into it, TMAO is made by gut bacteria out of phosphatidylcholine. And so if you have a dysbiosis issue, that will be something that you potentially need to address before taking phosphatidylcholine. There are certain gut bacteria that convert phosphatidylcholine into the problematic TMAO. Those are the main nutrients that I really want people to focus on to give their liver some love during this process. The next thing that I want to chat about are macronutrients. So essentially your fats, your carbohydrates, and your proteins, all of that really, they're all important. And what I really want to drive home here is you need a fed body in order for the liver to do its job. You need carbohydrates, you need fats, you need proteins, but specifically if we're really kind of supporting the liver. I want to make sure that the liver gets some really good high quality fats so it can really help to get the bowel 
flowing. Ingestion of fat helps to move the bile out of the gallbladder, but you also want to make sure you have the uh, phosphatidylcholine brought on in advance. So what I'm getting at here is your body is not going to work on detoxing and clearing things out if you are in a severe caloric deficit. You know, I'm not saying to go over and above and, you know, eat way outside of a particular calorie range or anything like that. What I'm saying is you don't want to, you know, be navigating an eating disorder or severely under eating during this process because that is your fuel to help your body do its job. Now, fasting. Fasting can be really great. And pulsed fasting, especially with a, a decent length of a few days, potentially kind of going on and off can be great. But fasting all the time, every day, day in and day out, that's not something that's going to be um, supportive of the detox process or really supportive for the liver. So that's what I have to say about what we call macronutrients. Just making sure that as you're approaching this, it's coming from a fed state. The next thing that you can do to show your liver some love during this process is really behavioral based. And so you want to make sure that you're increasing your water. And you might be wondering, well, waters are more like for the kidneys, why am I doing it for the liver? Well, the kidneys take part in the detox too. And when your liver is overwhelmed, it will kick things to the kidneys to take care of, but it's kind of been like a last ditch effort that the kidneys will specifically back up the functioning of the liver. And so we just want to make sure that the kidneys are working and flowing and how things leave out through the kidneys is through water. So you need to make sure that you're properly hydrated enough so you can detox appropriately. Like that's just the thing. So if the kidneys are up and they're ready and they're raring to go and they're moving stuff out, then the liver is going to be able to take like a breath, so to speak, and it will have less of a burden because it's got someone else on their team pulling their weight. So proper hydration is super important. Now, again, to be cautious, a lot of people navigating mold illness will have a fluid imbalance issue. And what I want to say about that is if you're increasing water, of course, you always need to be mindful full of your electrolytes. And if you have any cardiac issues or kidney issues, I mean, in general, you want to consult with your doctor before starting any of this. You know, I feel like a, a, a broken record, but I really want to drive that home. Okay. The next behavioral intervention that I want to chat about is pooping. Okay. As a naturopath, we talk about pooping day in and day out. It is nothing that makes me blush. And so with pooping, we really want people to be able to move their bowels one to two times per day. And that really means that poop is is the thing that carries the toxins out. Your liver moves the toxins through, they get mixed in with the bile stored in the gallbladder, and then your gallbladder contracts and pushes bile out into the intestines. And the intestines, of course, is where we modify our food and absorb all the nutrients, change it into stool, and it leaves the body, right? And so we want to make sure that people are pooping properly and they're getting enough fiber and things are moving through. The reason why is there's something called enterohepatic recirculation. Entero, intestines, hepatic, liver, recirculation, loop-de-loop. -loop. If you aren't pooping and you're not moving things through your stool and out of your body, it's going to get reabsorbed through the intestines. I feel like I should say, I shit you not right here. I shit you not. Um, your stool is carrying that out and your intestines do not waste. They recirculate everything as much as they can. They reserve that bile. In fact, they reserve 95% of it. And so if you're not moving stool regularly out of your body, you are recirculating toxins into your body. And to be frank, no wonder, pun intended, why you feel like shit when you don't poop. So um, we want to make sure that you're pooping realistically. Okay. The final like behavior modification thing that you can do to show your liver some love during treatment for mold illness is proper breathing and posture. And this is not some like hoity-toity, you need to have the right posture. You need to put the, the, the fork on one side and the knife on the other side of the plate and no elbows on the table. That's what I'm talking about with posture. If you picture inside a human body, we have something called lymphatics. Lymphatics go and they drain all the extra fluids and proteins and they help move stuff from the gut and kind of bring it back into circulation. The lymphatics are so important. And you have a big honking hollow tube of lymphatics that's behind your lungs and it goes and in, into the heart and dumps in. And so when you breathe properly, 
and you maintain right posture, you're not going to kink that tube, right? And so if you have crummy posture and you're kind of, you know, hanging around and you are maybe uh, pushing too much on that, what we call thoracic duct of the lymphatics in the body. And that drains the liver. And so just by nature of breathing, you are pumping that and helping that lymphatics return back to the heart and get back into circulation. And you're helping move that stuff away from the liver. It sounds silly, but proper breathing and proper posture is going to help those lymphatics do their job to support the liver. That is the last part of the behavioral modification part of supporting your liver and giving it some love. If you really want to give your liver some love, mold illness or not, whether it's in the beginning of navigating mold illness during or after, the major things you want to hit are your nutrients, your macronutrients, make sure you're in that fed state. And then of course, modifying your behavior to really make sure that you are just systemically helping your liver along. And so if you found this information helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. I am so happy that you found me and I am so excited to welcome you to your life after mold. Take care.